Hey everybody, welcome to the third video in this series. So if you missed any of the previous videos, go back and check on those. In this one, what I wanna do is talk in a little bit more depth about the various components of Vitesse. So there are a bunch of components in Vitesse, and if you recall last time, I ran this 101 initial cluster script. So let's walk through what this was doing in a little bit more depth, and also draw some pictures to see what these different components are. So I'm going to go up to the top, and recall that there was this source of this env.sh, but I'm gonna skip down to when it actually starts up the topo server. So there's this if statement here that can alternately start up either ZK, so Zookeeper, console, or etcd, and in our example last time it used etcd. So these are actually third-party tools, not necessarily built-in parts of a Vitesse, but they're uh, servers that spin up in order to keep track of the topography of, or topology, excuse me, of this cluster that's running. So basically keeping track of metadata about what nodes we have in this cluster and how everything is configured. And this will allow other components to be able to know what's going on and what's the layout of this Vitesse cluster. So one of those needs to get started up. And in this case, it is etcd that it chooses. And I had installed that earlier as a part of the prerequisites to building. Okay, so that gets started up, but then the first actual Vitesse component that gets started up is VT control D. And it uses, uh, throughout this script, it uses a bunch of other helper scripts. So it goes and uses this VT control D up. So I'll go take a look at that. And again, if you're following along, you can go into these same directories and you can browse through these same scripts. So this script does a few things, but the main important thing that it does is this command right here. And so this is the command to actually start up VT control D. And so this is basically a server that what you can do is using the client, you can send commands to VT control to have your cluster do different things and apply different workflows and so on. And we'll see in future videos some usage of running the client against the control server to tell the test cluster to do things. So this gets that component started up, and then let's go back to the 101 script. So that gets started up, and then in here, uh, it actually does use the client to apply a couple of things. So it sets the durability policy, and it also creates a uh, key space. So it creates that commerce key space that you saw briefly in the last video. Okay, then starting to get into some of the more interesting parts in here, there are two for loops and this for loop creates three instances of MySQL. And then this down here, this other one, what did I do there? Uh, this creates three VT tablets, one for each of those MySQL instances. So just real quick, I'll open up each of these. So this script is one of the ones that starts up MySQL. So it calls MySQL control to get that started up or executes that. And then the other one was, let's see, it was VT tablet up. And this one starts up uh, a VT tablet for each of those. And this is a very long VT tablet command, as you can see. So having these scripts in place, if we back up for a second, is very nice because actually properly starting up all of the different components of the tests and making sure they're talking to each other correctly can be kind of a chore. So it's very nice that the Vitesse repository provides all of these sort of built-in examples to make it easier to get up and running quickly. And then later on, you can start to learn more about what these different flags mean and the features and all that, right? Okay, so back to 101. A couple of other things that it does. So it starts up VT Orchestrator. And again, you are welcome to follow along and browse through these. Here's the key command for starting up VT Orc. And the orchestrator component is one that is used for essentially monitoring the health of the Vitesse cluster. And sometimes, especially when you have a big cluster, things happen, right? Like nodes go down, maybe the underlying EC2 instance has a problem, and so that gets killed, and thus some component of your cluster gets killed. VT orchestrator is a component that has the ability to kind of monitor what's going on. And if there is a problem, like if a primary goes down and it needs to replace a primary with a replica, VT Orchestrator gets to orchestrate the process of doing that, right? So this is a really important component in your cluster. And even in the example cluster, uh, it does start that up. Okay, so then getting close to the end here. Basically, the last part is getting VT Admin up and running. 
And so VT admin is actually two parts. There is a client and there is a server. So in the script here, here is where the actual admin uh, server part gets started up. Again, this is a pretty long command, but then there's some additional code later on here to get the client. So in other words, that user interface that we looked at last time to get this up and running. And then if you recall at the end, it printed out this script that told me where I could connect to and I have it open in the browser. So that's a whole bunch of steps, right? And if you had to go through and, and download and install the tests and then figure all of those steps out properly yourself, that would be pretty annoying, right? So it's a complicated piece of software, but there's a reason why it's complicated because it does a lot of cool stuff and it scales extremely well to literally can potentially have thousands of nodes in a single of a test cluster, right? So complicated, but also super powerful. So those are all of the different components. But what I want to do is again, go back to the drawing board to draw a picture of all of these different things. And actually before that, I want to switch over and look at the Vitesse docs quickly so that I can show you how you can also find this information in the Vitesse docs. So I'm here on the Vitesse page and you can go over to docs and over on the sidebar, you pick your version and you can go over to concepts. And if you're ever wondering like, okay, I see this thing in the scripts called, let's say V schema. What is V schema? You can click here gives you a very short description of what a V schema is. Or for example, VT control, right? If you're wondering what is VT control, you can come to this page and look at it. So again, sometimes the docs don't quite have as much detail as you would want, but they are a very nice place to get overviews of some of these concepts. And there are some pages here in these docs that are very detailed. So next, let's go look at the drawing board and draw out a picture of these components. All right, so here we're on the drawing board and I wanna draw out what we saw Looking through that script, I wanna actually show you what that looks like in terms of kind of pictorially and how these components fit together. So I'm gonna to start by drawing the VT, or actually no, I'm gonna start by drawing the MySQL instances which have an attached VT gate process. So in the example from before, there were three instances of MySQL, right? So I'll draw those out here. And these were started up, these actually were not the first things that were started up in the script, but I'll draw these first right here. Okay, so there were three instances, but then for each one of those, remember there was another loop after it. And what it did is it installed basically a process called VT tablet. And this was for every instance of MySQL running in a test cluster, you're gonna generally have a VT tablet and the VT gate will actually talk to MySQL through this tablet. So having this process, and I'm actually drawing it as like an attached box just because they basically go hand in hand when you have a cluster like this, right? BT tablet, okay, great. So we had that, and then of course, uh, later on, actually I might have skipped over that part when we talked about it, but that script also did spin up a VT gate, and that's actually a really important component, so I probably shouldn't have skipped over it, but one of the things in that script was starting up a VT gate, so I'm gonna put that right here. And this is how your application will actually end up connecting to and communicating with these instances of MySQL, right? So I'll draw an arrow there, arrow there, and arrow right there. Okay, so we have that VT gate. Now, like I said, let's say you had an application, right? An app or even a user directly, right? Would make connections to this VT gate and so on. But there were a few other components as well. So recall that there was a, let's see, VT admin. So I'll put that down here, VT admin, and there was actually two components to this, right? So I'll say that this is the server or the API, and then there was a client of the VT admin, so VT admin, and this is basically that web user interface, and this can communicate with that API, and so this is the UI, and this is something that a user, right, if there was like a database administrator or something could go look at VT admin. Now there was also another component, which was VT control, so VT control, and this had a server, but there was also a VT control client. And this, again, would communicate with the server, but this is something that a database administrator or infrastructure person could send commands to that client to then talk to that server, to then make changes to what's going on with this Vitesse cluster. And on top of all this, there was that part that got spun up at the beginning, etcd. And this is the component 
that is that topology server, right? It keeps track of the topology of this whole cluster. And in this case, even though this picture looks kind of complicated, it's actually pretty simple relative to some big production clusters that are out there using the test. There's tons of big companies that use this, people like GitHub, Slack, Etsy, with hugely more complicated clusters than what we see here. And there's another component, which is VT orc. So this is that orchestrator. Remember that I said that can manage things like what happens if, for instance, I'll change the color over here. Let's say that this node right here was my primary, right? So primary and what happens if this goes down for some reason, right? So I'm going to do that. VT orchestrator would be responsible for picking a new primary. So let's say it chooses that one to be the new primary. It would get that into place so that basically from the applications perspective, we could experience zero downtime. All right, so that's a lot of components, right? And again, this is a super simple server. They can be much more complex. And so this is one of the reasons why one, having all those scripts is nice for just learning how the test works. But also this is one of the reasons why a managed the test cluster from PlanetScale, which is who this video is being made by, uh, is really nice, right? Because it takes a lot of the hassle out of having to set up and configure all these different things with a few clicks of a button, you can have a test cluster spun up on your behalf. That gives you super high availability, super high resilience, and all these different kinds of incredible features that we'll talk about throughout this video. Okay, so I think that pretty much will wrap up this video. We talked about the components, we went through the script, and I'll actually go back because, if you recall, we did skip over one component of that script, right, which was setting up the VT gate. So it's kind of easy to skip over here because it's just a small little part of the script. But let's see, after uh, applying, doing these uh, apply schemas, and before going and starting VT admin, we had actually spun up a VT gate. And again, in this script, there's a command to get that VT gate started, which I'll just show you here. And again, that one's pretty big and complicated. Okay, great. So hopefully now you have a better picture of what all these components do and how they work together. In the next video, I wanna start talking about sharding. Particularly, we're gonna go over vertical sharding first, conceptually, as well as how it works in the tests, and then move on to horizontal sharding. So thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.